All right. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for artwork, artist residencies of Katie Bruce, Katie Marie Bruce. My name is Angeline Simon and I'll be your moderator for today's session. First, we would like to acknowledge that our session is being streamed from Lethbridge, which is situated on traditional Blackfoot Confederacy territory. We pay respect to the Blackfoot people, past, present, and future, while recognizing and respecting their cultural heritage, beliefs, and relationship to the land. The city of Lethbridge is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. This is our eighth session of artwork delivered on Zoom. We appreciate the continued support from the arts community in tuning into these PD sessions. All the sessions are on our YouTube channel, which is AAC Left. So you can see that here, this is what it looked like. If you just go on YouTube, you just type in AAC Left, and that is our channel. And I would also like to mention that we are recording today's session and uploading it to YouTube. Um, we will also be sharing it with everyone who has registered. So if there's something you want to like go back into, um, we'll send you the link. Um, so for housekeeping, if you haven't already done so, please introduce yourself in the chat box. Uh, if you're an artist, please let us know about your practice. And there will be time for questions following the presentation. Uh, if you have any, please enter those into the chat box while the presentation is running. And then after the presentation has concluded, we will get back to them. I'll like, go through them and we'll ask Katie those questions. I will now pass it off to Tara Glanders, our Membership and Projects Manager. Hi, everybody. Uh, and welcome to tonight's presentation of Art Work. Um, art is work. And uh, uh, we've had great success with this professional development series, and we appreciate your participation. So I'm just going to tell you a bit about the Allied Arts Council. Um, we are a 60, uh, 62 or 63 year old, 63 this year, 63 year old uh, uh, arts organization, arts advocacy or organization. Uh, we uh, manage a large community art center in downtown Lethbridge known as CASA, which I'm sure many of you are uh, aware of. Uh, we have a robust education and gallery program. We also run a fine arts and crafts store on 7th Street called AAC Works, where we continue to support uh, you know, the talented artists that are located here in uh, Southern Alberta. We also assist with, Southern, uh, assist with public art projects and we organize arts days and uh, Christmas at CASA and many other events uh, throughout the year. Um, we are a member-based organization. So this is uh, my opportunity to hit you up for uh, a membership. Think about joining uh, us. It's $25 for artist membership. Um, and it uh, allows us to bring you this sort of programming uh, ongoing and uh, free of charge of free cost to you. Again, membership is uh, $25 a year. If you're interested in membership, please go to our website or you can contact me uh, at projects at artsleftbridge.org. Um, I just want to tell you a bit tonight about uh, our presenter, Katie Marie Bruce our exceptionally talented education manager at CASA, who is also a professional artist and a very talented arts administrator as well. Uh, Katie is an artist and educator based here in Lethbridge and was funded uh, by the social science. Oh, Katie, I'm sorry. It only printed some of your bio. So I'm just gonna tell you that Katie is wonderful, exceptionally talented, has taught at the University of Alberta also has her MFA uh, from, I believe, York University, and uh, I will just hand it over to Katie uh, because really that's why we're here tonight, to hear her give her presentation on uh, artist residencies. So take it away, Katie. Awesome. Um, I'll read you out my bio since I have it here. Great. Right. <laughs> it is going to be in the third person because I'm not going to try and transpose prose, uh, <laughs> that right now. Um, so I received my MFA with a focus in print media from York University in 2015, um, where my thesis work examining empathy uh, was funded by the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada. Um, I also have a BFA from the University of Lethbridge here um, in studio arts with a distinction, which I got in 2011. Um, my practice itself actually examines um, empathy, the affective and affected body, 
and the intersection of emotional and uh, non-performative labor, um, often in print and sculpture forms. Um, I've been invited to residencies across North America from California to Newfoundland. Um, and I've exhibited and spoken at events across Canada in the last 10 years. Um, I'm currently the Education Services Manager uh, for the Allied Arts Council of Lethbridge, and I'm coming up on two years. Woo! So, just going to uh, get my presentation set up here. Um, perfect. So, uh, tonight we're going to be discussing the what, where, and how of applying to artist residencies. Um, I'll be supplying you with, you with a couple of resources, um, and because you're going to be getting this kind of as a document after the fact, um, I'm not going to like hang out too long on that particular screen, and I really want to get into what a residency is and how it can serve you best. Okay. So, um, in addition to a regular studio practice, um, artist residencies offer several advantages. So, I'm a printmaker. Um, I need certain facilities in order to actually make art. And so up until relocating in, uh, it back into Lethbridge, I was using residencies as a way to kind of access these facilities. Um, they also offer technical support. So whether that's because you are wanting to try something new, um, or if you need assistance with say, kiln loads or whatever the case may be, depending on your practice, um, that's another advantage that a residency can offer you. Um, it's also a community. So depending on where you are in your career, you may have um, just recently graduated from a bachelor's degree program, master's program, whatever the case may be. But one of the things that you're going to find, or maybe you've already found at this point is that there can be a lack of community, right? You're used to a studio setting in which you're getting feedback from other individuals. Um, and this is one of the ways that you can kind of foster that in sort of smaller, shorter doses. Um, for me, the two big things and part of the reason why I'm especially passionate about artist residencies at CASA is that they offer you distance from the everyday and concentrated time. Um, it can be really tricky to work on a large project or to begin research on something if you are having to, you know, manage that around your everyday schedule. So whether that's going to work, going to classes, whatever the case may be, um, it can be really difficult. And that's not a short sight, like that's not a criticism of having a practice while doing other things. It's just the reality of life. Um, it can also offer some relief from uh, gendered activities such as like caregiving, uh, housekeeping, those kinds of things. Um, so there are definitely significant advantages um, to going on one. Um, as far as how residencies work, there's so many different kinds out there. I'm gonna talk specifically about ones that I have been to and what those kinds of models look like. So for instance, we've got CASA, you have free access under regular circumstances, that's 24 seven access um, to facilities and equipment. With our program, um, we don't provide accommodations. So it's specifically kind of geared towards those that maybe are a little bit closer to Lethbridge um, so that they can either have a connection that they might be able to stay with in order to actually facilitate the accommodation piece of it. Um, the picture here that you're seeing is in Cahoots, which is in California. I was there in 2019 for a single week. Um, but there's also places like Sparkbox Studio, which exists in Ontario. That residency space is especially close to my heart as that was the state, like the first residency I went on. Um, they offer accommodations and facilities kind of simultaneously. So. Um, you'll see in a couple of slides the actual like little cabins that we were set up with in cahoots. Um, but uh, essentially what it is, is it's nice because it's a very concentrated space, right? Like it's 25 steps from the studio that you're going to be working in. So if you have like inspiration in the middle of the night or you end up working until very late, you can set your own schedule and just make it work for yourself. 
Um, there's also places like St. Michael's Print Shop, which I was also in in 2019, um, and it is a competitive merit-based application process, which means that they're actually paying you to come to them. Now, of course, those are like kind of the best case scenario is that your funding is tied right into it, but that doesn't mean that there isn't merit in going to a space where you have to pay. Um, other options might exist like a thematic opportunity. Um, the BAMP Center used to have a lot of those. Um, Gilbert Point Place in Toronto used to have a lot of those where you're working around a very like similar structure um, with a group of like-minded individuals. And I'll talk a little bit about those later. Um, there's also open calls versus deadlines. So with CASA, we do have two deadlines a year, um, one on January 15th and one on June 15th. But there's also spaces like Sparkbox where you can apply at any time in the year. Um, so if the opportunity comes across your page, and by page, I mean like, you know, your screen, because let's be honest, that's generally how we're going to find these things. Um, you can just, you know, go ahead and apply and you'll hear back when you hear back. Um, St. Michael's Print Shop is a once a year deadline. Um, and again, that's because it's based on, it's an award that you're given. It's not just the facilities. So this is going to be kind of the neat of this presentation is understanding what your needs are. And I would recommend actually doing this before you start looking for places because you're gonna get a little bit of a better idea as to what specifically you need. Um, so figuring out what the purpose or goal for you to apply. And that's not thinking like high level, that's thinking like very base needs, like what kind of facilities do I need? So for myself, I know for sure at a bare minimum, I need a press. It's also really great if I have things like an etching tank and a ventilation hood, but I can work with other um, medias that don't necessarily need that, but the press is gonna be, that's gonna be pretty important. Um, it could be merit-based. So have you, you've come across something, another artist, um, and you've seen that they've gone to this and it seems like a nice way to kind of match their trajectory it would be to mimic it by visiting similar spaces. Um, or it could be that you know that a certain gallery is going to be looking for you to have X number of residencies on your CV before you actually apply there. And that's a totally realistic and absolutely okay thing to have to have. Um, maybe you want to start a new project or you want to finish one that's been dragging on for too long and you need that kind of concentrated time so that you can actually focus properly on it. Um, are you looking for feedback or community? Is it that piece where you need, you know, uh, you've hit sort of like a spot in your practice where you kind of actually now are starting to need some second and third voices and some opinions to kind of send you on either a similar trajectory or perhaps like some reassurance that you're going somewhere with something. It could also be exhibition production. So perhaps you know that you have a show in two years and you are looking for a space where you can just go and hunker down and make a lot of work. Perhaps you're doing material exploration or research. Um, and research could just be reading and writing. It doesn't have to be like work production. Maybe you're wrapping up a project and you need to do a bunch of writing. Perhaps that's what you need. And also keep in mind that like, I am using printmaking examples, but extrapolate that out to your own practice. It could also be like something else that I'm not covering in those possibilities. So once you kind of understand what your goal is, what you want, what you need, you actually have to start thinking about the logistics of the space. Um, is it equipment based? So as I said, like I need a print facility. So I need to make sure that I know what how big a press bed is, you know, smallest that I can work on versus the largest that I'd like to work on. Um, do I need technical support? Is it that I actually have like questions that I need answers? Maybe I'm researching non-toxic printmaking practices. So I need to go somewhere that does that on the regular so that I can adapt my own practice for them. Perhaps I just need new surroundings, like just to get out of the city and maybe go hang out in the woods. 
or like a more um, rural kind of community setting. What kind of accommodations do I need? Do I ideally, would I like to be right kind of like on campus? Um, or am I okay with, you know, having a 20 minute drive from, you know, the neighboring town to wherever this space is? Are there caregiving options that I need to take into consideration? Do I have to bring a child with me? Is it that I'd like my partner to be able to travel with me? And then maybe most importantly, how much time do I actually need to accomplish the things that I'm setting out as my goal? And then it's nice to have also a couple of wants on your list. Um, travel opportunities. Am I looking to go to the East Coast this year? Do I wanna to travel to Europe for some reason? I mean, obviously we have reasons for that, but you know what I mean. Um, is it more about the venue? Like maybe you want something that has big open spaces or maybe you want an individual studio space. Those aren't necessarily needs, but they're things that you would desire out of an ideal residency space. And then one of the other big questions is going to be how will I fund this? So is it going to be something where I need to be given um, an award in order to actually facilitate that residency taking place? Can I dip into my savings? Um, am I going to be applying for grants? Um, what about community? So as I kind of had mentioned earlier, right, community can be a big piece of it. So this is um, at In Cahoots. I took more pictures there because there were like other people there with me, um, but they had three other residents at the same time. Um, Macy is the lady holding the dog and she runs the space. Um, but we also had Ariel, uh, Colleen and Adam there with me at the same time. So one of the things to think about is, are you looking for a cohort to discuss ideas with? How important is that feedback loop? Are you comfortable having it with yourself or do you want other individuals there? Um, when I was in St. Michael's this or I guess not this past year now, in 2019, um, I was the only artist in residence, but there were other folks using the studio space. Um, that would be the same case kind of for CASA, where we have other individuals using the studio space simultaneously, but chances are you're the only artist in residence at the time. Um, a question to ask yourself would be how many artists in a, need to be in attendance or how many artists would be the maximum that you would want to share that space with. Um, and a lot of that is going to come back to sort of just understanding what your needs are. One of the things that is going to be important to consider, though, is how are you going to engage in community? Because a lot of these spaces are looking for um, an artist talk, a workshop, some kind of studio visit. Perhaps you're doing a uh, sort of like work relationship with the actual space where you're doing some sort of uh, studio tasks in order to assist with the cost of having you there. Um, I've seen other spaces like there's a women's workshop space. I think that one's in Winnipeg and they offer or they want their artists to offer a mentorship, right? So just kind of seeing what would you be most comfortable with? Artists talk, I mean, I would prefer to avoid that like the plague because public speaking is like among my least favorite things to do, but a workshop or a studio visit, I could probably fairly easy facilitate. And it's just having those questions with yourself before you're looking for app for like spaces to apply to so that when you're coming across them, you're not saying, yes, I would do something when it would be really uncomfortable for you to do. Um, thematic residencies are like a whole other beast because they're not spaces where you are going to do your own work and complete a vision that you have in mind. Um, they're often sort of broadly stated uh, sort of thematic spaces because they're looking to attract individuals from different fields. So it could be that you end up at a thematic residency with a dancer, a writer, an artist, and then, you know, a plethora of other individuals who have different backgrounds. And that can be really engaging to work with, right? To have other individuals who are coming in with such varied and different perspectives. But it is something to kind of keep in mind that, hmm, like maybe that works for you and maybe it doesn't. Um, there are probably going to be group activities in a thematic residency, and generally those are some kind of daily schedule. 
Now, I don't want to scare you by saying that there's a daily schedule, because sometimes there isn't. But generally speaking, there's some kind of shared activity that takes place every day. And that could be a studio visit, it could be working on a collaborative project, it could be going out for a walk in the woods with the other six individuals. Um, when you come across these, it's a little bit backwards from how, um, how I'm kind of framing it, right? Because you're going to come across it and find out whether or not is that a theme that's core or peripheral to my practice? So is it something that is going to be integrated fairly easily? Or is it something that's a little bit more tangential and therefore might provide some other sort of spiraling processes that could come out of it? Um, ask yourself also if you've worked collaborative, collaboratively together with others and maybe what might have influenced that experiment. Because just because one wasn't especially your favorite thing doesn't mean that when you get six new individuals in the same room that that's going to happen again. And then lastly, I would consider whether or not this thematic experiment was going to be contained within just that, you know, two to six weeks, or if it was something that I was going to be able to continue and take outside of that space. Um, this is just a shot from one of the um, bedrooms in Sparkbox. Um, so I've gone there two times on a residency and then been there several times after that um, on a more friendly terms. Not more friendly, it's always been friendly, um, but on a little bit more familiar terms. Um, and it's been always like a really wonderful space to look into. And it would be one that if they were accepting applications right now, I would be like pushing really hard on all y'all to go and look at because it is truly a phenomenal space. Um, so now that you've done that sort of like internal research in terms of figuring out what your needs are, what your wants are, what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do, now it's kind of the time to like look at opportunities. So there are a number of different kind of avenues that you can go about looking for things. Um, there's a Kimbo, which is a just a website, um, but you can also get it via email. There's Res Artis, and I'm going to come back to that one in just a half a second here. Um, Instant Coffee is more of a mailing list, so and it's also open to like all kinds of things. So it might not just be residency opportunities, but also things like someone's selling a kiln, um, perhaps they're offering a class. It's more uh, people submit things and then everything goes out all at once. Um, I would also recommend checking in with peers and mentors. So are there individuals in your current community that have gone on residencies or perhaps have come across things um, and just striking up that conversation to see whether or not there is some crossover interest um, that they might have some familiarity with spaces that you haven't heard of yet. Um, I would also recommend stocking some alumni CVs. So if you have folks in your like from your BFA that were a couple years older than you and you were especially like fond of their practice, I would look and see what they've got on their resume. So if they've been to the Banff Center before or if they've tried one in like the Vermont Center, um, seeing like what they did out of that, because oftentimes there will be a, a body of work that comes with it. And there's also a number of Google Docs floating around. If you literally just search it, they will come up, um, where people have sort of open source inserted information into um, a Google Doc that has all kinds of different um, resources. And that can be grants, exhibitions, residencies. Again, that one's a little bit more open, um, but I'm gonna circle back to Res Artiste here. Um, whoop, wrong way. Sorry, I've lost my mouse, so I'm gonna hold off until the end of this and then I'll show you the actual website. The reason that I wanna call your attention to Res Artiste and Akimbo is because Res Artiste is specifically for residencies. However, it is also um, really geared more towards um, 
spaces that can pay for advertising. So they're going to be a little bit more uh, established. Um, and they might not be like a nonprofit arts organization because they're paying a fee to actually have somebody show you how to get to them. What's nice about that site is that it has like a lot of little boxes you can check. So once you've done that internal research to find out what you need out of a space, you can go to a site like that where they actually can, you can plug it all in. So you're looking for a space in Canada, you need a print studio and you'd like accommodations and you check those little boxes off and then it pulls up the results for you. Um, it's also international. So if you're looking for spaces you want to travel as part of this, um, there is that option as well. There's also subscription processes. So Tar mentioned at the top of this that um, there are AAC memberships. We have an AAC's Arts in Lethbridge e-newsletter e that comes out bi-monthly. Um, and with that, there's like a list, like I'm not kidding, it is very long, but a list of opportunities that are available to artists. Again, that one isn't as like directed at residencies, but they do come up on there. Um, there's also Pilot Art List, um, which offers a monthly or yearly subscription service. And it's like, I think it's $5 a month. Um, and that individual um, actually like collates all of these different calls. They have it separated out into Canada ones versus the United States. Um, and they're really good paying opportunities. So they're not ones where you're going to pay to go unless they put a little asterisk beside it because they think that it's particularly important um, or a very good opportunity to go to. And what's I kind of like specifically about the pilot art list is that it's also color coded. So if, uh, if I was looking for LGBTQ uh, residency spaces, that's I think in pink. Uh, if I was a curator and looking at things, that's also got its own little color code. And it just kind of helps you sort through things quickly because I like spreadsheets um, and I also really love color coding. And so that's a really nice way for me to sort of like sit down with a single list, go through and see what's actually applicable to me. Um, with the exception of Res Artis, all of these resources may also have grant leads as well. Um, so once you actually have kind of like a short list of spaces that initially check your boxes, I would actually start doing research into each of them and making sure that you can understand what their expectations are. So for example, uh, Sparkbox is now a non-toxic studio space. So if I was an oil painter and I was gonna go there, I would need to explain in my application process that I could work in non-toxic processes. Um, or if there were things that I could or could not do. Um, comparing that against your needs, so understanding their expectations, compare against your needs, and narrow down your list. I think it's also kind of important to keep a kill your darlings list. So things that don't quite fit right now, but could, that's a really great option to have. Um, and it could be that they're looking for somebody with five years experience and you only have three. That's not that far off. Right? Most of these application processes aren't going to be same year turnaround. It's going to be maybe eight months to a year before you're actually being scheduled in, depending on the program. Um, when I was at Sparkbox the first time, the day that I arrived, I found out that I'd also gotten into a Banff uh, residency, and that was going to take place like two weeks after I got back from Sparkbox. And that was supposed to be another four weeks. Um, so that wasn't super ideal, but it's also the only time that's happened to me. And so I think that maybe what may have actually been the cause of that sort of short turnaround uh, would have been that somebody else dropped out. And so they had a space that was available and they can plug other artists in. Um, but yeah, you have a kill your darlings list. The things that don't fit quite at that moment or maybe it's, you know, the funding cycle for grants hasn't caught up yet and you need more time for it, but the residency deadline is coming up sooner than that. It's always good to just have sort of a list of opportunities that you can return to in three months, six months and see whether or not it's actually a better fit now. 
applications are generally pretty standard. Um, for CASA, we ask for an image list, images, CV, what you'd like to do, um, and your contact info. Um, and for the most part, most spaces are going to be pretty similar. They might ask for your social media handles just to see what else you're doing. Um, but the project proposal is going to be sort of the beast of it. So with everything kind of in that top, top bullet, we generally just keep that updated on a rolling basis. Um, so that when an opportunity comes along, I'm not trying to find something or like recreate or remember what I've done in the last year. It's something that you just update along the way and then you're good to go. Uh, the project proposal and the artist statement might come hand in hand in some cases, depends on the space and what they're asking for. Um, but within your project proposal specifically, you wanna show that you've done your research. So actually looking to see you know, in that uh, understanding their expectations piece, you actually want to kind of show that you've done that piece um, so that they're not accepting someone that may or may not know what's actually going on there. Um, also, try to be specific in your actual proposal. Um, it's a lot easier for me as someone who reviews these proposals to pick up on when someone needs like needs needs that space versus someone that's just kind of applying for another line on their CV. And a lot of the time that comes down to being specific about what it is that you're hoping to accomplish while you're there. Um, provide good accommodate or like good, good documentation, right? So Angeline Simon, who introduced us at the top of the hour, um, she put on a documenting art walk artwork presentation, and I would recommend going back and looking at that if you haven't yet, just to get some tips and tricks on like how to provide good good documentation, because honestly, it does make a big difference in how professional you come off as. And then I would always try and get a second perspective. So if I'm applying to somewhere and I haven't actually, you know, been around other artists for a while, it might be a good idea to hit up one of my alumni buddies and be like, I'm applying to this thing. Can you look over my proposal and make sure that it's as clear as I think it is? Because it can make perfect sense in your head and be not especially clear on paper. Um, this is the internal shot of the little like um, bachelor pad that I had when I was at in cahoots. And as you can tell, a lot of these folks put like a lot of care and attention into them when they're not big institutions. So Macy, you know, has some original art up on the um, on the walls, kind of similar to Sparkbox. They actually in cahoots modeled after Sparkbox, having been there several years earlier. When in doubt, when you're writing your application, if you have questions, you can probably contact the institution itself and see um, if there is anything that's kind of, that they can provide clarification on. So when I was at CASA, um, I had actually um, applied there a little while earlier. And so my project, by the time I had been accepted, I changed a little bit and I needed just to find out if that was going to be okay. Um, can you, can I morph my project because it's been a year since my application and my, my practice looks a little bit different now. A lot of the time that's not going to be an issue, um, but if you have questions about um, what a space can offer, uh, if you need clarification on what kind of facilities they have, get in touch. The other bonus side of that is that um, they'll remember your name, <laughs> quite simply. Uh, it's a nice way to kind of introduce yourself as long as you come off as a professional individual, um, because then when they're reviewing applications, they'll remember that, oh yeah, hey, like, you know, Tara had applied or had sent me an email a couple of months ago and was asking about this. Now I have their application. That makes me feel really good, right? Like as an administrator, I understand that they're committed to this process. Um, these are the additions that I produced when I was at my CASA residency in 2016 um, and then promptly moved back from Toronto. 
because the facility space was significantly better than what I could get my hands on for a tenth of the cost <laughs> of what I could access in Toronto. Uh, there was another slide. It's telling me I'm done. So I'm just going to exit out of here um, so that I can actually show you Res Artiste for just a moment. If I can find my mouse. There we go. So. So this is Res Artiste here. Um, if you go into the Explorer, you can look at different profiles versus open calls. So open calls being those ones that are just running on a whenever you get around to it basis. Um, but for residency profiles, just to show you how this search engine kind of works, please internet, be my friend. There's also a Kimbo up here, so you can kind of see um, it's a little bit less. You can narrow down what you're looking at, um, but it is a little bit more like call for entries for exhibitions, gallery spaces, jobs, all kinds of things. And what's kind of nice about Akimbo is that you can sign up to just have that delivered to your inbox um, and also tell them what geographic areas you're looking for across Canada um, for those kinds of calls and submissions. So here is sort of what this overview of Res Artis looks like. So it's showing me on uh, this side of the screen, on the left hand side of the screen, um, 100 to 572 opportunities, but I can also narrow things down. So if I'm looking for residence fees, residency fees, yes versus no, I have options there. Um, am I looking for rural versus urban? Options there. Accommodation types, so whether or not you want a shared space or a, a, a solo space, just depends. Um, but it is a really great resource. Again, those are going to be sort of like your your more institutional spaces because they are paying to actually have their um, space advertised here. But that doesn't mean that it's a bad space to look at. So I think that's kind of where I'm going to halt. Uh, I'm going to throw it back into the opportunities section here and I'm going to open the floor for questions. So whether you have um, something in the chat or if you want to pop on mic, whatever the case may be. I think Angelina is going to help with facilitating that. Yeah, so um, let's see here. We do have uh, one question. It says, are there remote artists in residence opportunities right now with the pandemic, or is it more likely we'll have to wait till this clears up? For sure. So um, I'm going to use my friend Michelle. As an example, so her and her partner both did sort of digital residencies um, with the Grenfell Art Gallery in Newfoundland. Um, so there are still opportunities out there right now in terms of like not having to physically relocate. Um, whether or not they have a backlog of individuals that they have already programmed in would be the question that I would have for myself. Um, and that would be a question that I would put towards those spaces. There's also um, the gallery, or the Gathered Gallery, uh, which is another digital, exclusively digital space. Um, and they offer sort of like profiles, but also resident opportunities where you're doing a little bit of a showcase on your practice in terms of process, both materiality or materially and then um, in your research. And those are considered like a digital residency sort of opportunity. Um, so there are ones out there. It's just a matter of kind of hunting them down. And that would be probably an akimbo um, search. Okay, I don't see any other questions in the comments in the chat, but we can wait a few minutes and see if anyone wants to type something in. Sure. Um, I think there was, I did have one I um, 
had put sort of a question out there today on my Instagram. Uh, and there was a question from one of the participants that's here. So is it worth attending residencies that cost money if you don't have um, a grant to pay for? And I think that kind of boils down to um, how much of a financial implication is it going to be for you to go on your own on your own funding without like a grant um, and also what your purpose is. So is it something that you can maybe kind of sort of do on your own um, versus something where it is like you need facilities, uh, you need technical support, you need resources. Those are great options to actually go somewhere else for. And depending on what your budget is, places like Akimbo might be able to find a little bit more manageable um, residency opportunities. We have another question, a couple, two questions actually. Uh, so I'll do the first one. Are there opportunities for emerging artists as well as those with a lot of experience and a long CV? Absolutely, yeah. Um, actually like two days ago, I came across this article that just like baffled my mind because it was someone arguing that if you're under 35, you shouldn't be applying to exhibitions, residencies, anything like that. And honestly, like, please don't do that. Whenever you feel confident to start putting applications out there, you're more than welcome to. Um, like CASA will take any kind of individual, uh, whether or not they are like right out of their bachelor's degree or whether or not they have, you know, 20 years of experience. I'm more looking like as an administrator when I put on that hat versus my artist hat, when I put on my administrator hat, what I'm really looking for um, is a commitment to practice. And I think that you can see that whether or not your CV is a couple lines large or if it's several pages. Another question here. What was the most difficult thing you experienced when attending residencies and what was the best and most surprising thing? Um, most difficult, um, I mean, aside from trying to navigate the San Francisco airport, which was like a literal nightmare because they have ports that are I and one, but only indicated with a single dash, um, or single stroke, um, would have to have been my experience at the Banff Center. Um, I, like I had said earlier, um, I arrived at Sparkbox. The day that I arrived at Sparkbox, I got the, you're invited, come on down in six weeks time. Um, and figuring that out was really difficult to kind of whether or not I could do both because I was an acting manager at a retail location at the same time. Um, and then when I got to the Banff Center, I was really bummed at the space that I was given. So whereas you know, the pictures were of these big, glorious open spaces. I got shoved in an office that uh, was smaller than the one that I'm currently in. Um, and it really kind of like squashed the creativity that I had was feeling coming off of this other residency experience. Um, best and most surprising thing. Uh, I'm gonna go with how much work I got done when I was in St. Michael's. Um, and that was partially because of the hosts that I had, they worked at the, or one of them worked at the space and one of them worked at a restaurant kind of nearby. So I constantly had options in terms of like when I was gonna go into the studio. Um, but for being there for four weeks and for leaving like the studio for two weekends during that to go and be with friends, um, I was really shocked at how accommodating the space was um, and just how much work I actually managed to get done because I think I came home with like seven editions. All right, I think that's all the questions we have. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen here and finish up the AAC slideshow and have Tara um, have a few remarks. All right, Tara, you can, yeah, take it away. 
Thank you, Katie, so much. That was so uh, such fabulous, useful information, and, and I really appreciate the effort you put into uh, uh, to providing us all this great information. Uh, so thank you uh, for that. I just wanted to let everybody know, uh, hit everybody up for membership again. Please consider becoming a member of the Allied Arts Council. It's $25 a year for um, uh, artist members, and you get access to a lot of great information, support, um, and you're supporting a wonderful organization as well who does a lot of work in this community. And I just wanted to let you know that our next uh, artwork is going to be our very famous tax tips for artists. It is going to be February 4th at six o'clock. And uh, it's a very popular event. But if you have questions around your taxes about money you've made through your artistic practice, or perhaps you've gotten a grant or something like that, uh, there will be an accountant there to answer all your uh, questions. Uh, so thank you uh, very much. And you can certainly go to our website uh, at artslethbridge.org, or you can send me an email at projects at artslethbridge.org, or you can contact Angeline, who is uh, the facility manager at CASA, assistant F facility manager, and uh, it is admin assistant at artslethbridge. Sorry, I just I just remembered what my last slide was going to be. Um, and so I just want to let everybody know that there will be like we are accepting residency applications mm. at this time and that the due date is going to be on the 15th of this month. So you have a little bit over a week to kind of get that sorted. But if not, we do another round um, in June. So you've got a couple more months if you need some time to sort of flesh out what your projects are, do that wonderful internal research that I love so much, um, and then send off an application. And if you have any questions at all, you can contact me at education at artslethbridge.org. That's it, there we go. Awesome. Good night, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>